American RV Center in Evansville, Indiana, presents a walkthrough guide of the setup and use of your brand new travel trailer or fifth wheel. After arriving at the campground and backing in, leveling the camper side to side by backing up on blocks, be sure to chalk your trailer securely. Front to back leveling is best done with the tongue jack on the front of your camper. Raise or lower the front end until the camper is level from front to back. On models with manual stabilizer jacks, simply crank the jacks down until they are snug with the ground. If your RV is equipped with electric stabilizer jacks, simply find the button on the inside of your camper, push it towards extend, and allow the jacks to contact the ground until snug. Do not try to raise or lower the camper off the ground with the jacks. Your camper is equipped with either a 30 amp or 50 amp AC shore power electrical system to supply your camper with electrical power. To connect at the campground, simply open your electrical access door and pull out the amount of cable that you need. Most are equipped with around 25 feet. Be sure to only connect it to the proper amperage for your camper. Your RV is equipped with two separate water systems. On the left, your onboard freshwater tank or non-pressurized system, and on the right, your city water or pressurized system. To fill your onboard freshwater tank, use a white RV drinking water hose and simply fill your tank. When full, water will either come back out of the fill or out of a vent underneath the camper. The drain and vents are generally located underneath the camper directly below the water tank fill. When staying at a campground with a water connection at the campsite, you can use your pressurized or city water connection. Simply connect the hose to the city water inlet on the side of your camper. Always use a pressure regulator on the other end of the hose at the campground end to prevent damage due to high water pressure. The wastewater system on your camper is generally comprised of two tanks. A gray water tank, which is the gray valve on the left, for your sink and shower drain water, and a black water tank, the larger black valve on the right, for your toilet drain water. Whether stopping at the dump station on the way out or connecting to the sewer line at the campsite, it's a relatively easy and clean process. First, remove the sewer cap and attach your sewer hose. It's good practice to wait till the black water tank is at least two-thirds full. Always dump it first, followed by the gray water tank, to flush out the line. Some campgrounds offer cable TV service. If present, simply connect your coaxial cable from the campground hookup to your camper. And while you're outside, this is also a good time to unlatch your vented range hood cover to allow for proper ventilation while cooking and baking. Many campers are equipped with either two 30 or 20 pound propane tanks. These will run your fridge, furnace, water heater, and stove. This particular model is equipped with an automatic switchover system. This system will switch from an empty propane tank to a full one automatically. To use this feature, simply turn the valve on the right toward the tank you'd like to use first. When propane is present, the sight glass in the middle will turn from red to green, indicating that there is propane. When the full tank runs empty, the sight glass will turn red and it will switch automatically. Slide-outs are as easy to use as they are functional. Be sure any travel locks are removed and simply press the out button. Always be sure to check for obstructions outside as well as inside. Make sure to release the button as soon as the slide-out is fully extended to keep from damaging the system. To bring the slide out in, be sure everything is off the floor and away from the mechanism and simply press the in button on your slide out. Be sure to release the button as soon as the slide out is fully retracted. One of the most important parts of your camper is your system monitor panel. This shows the levels of the gray water holding tank, black water holding tank, 
freshwater holding tank, and your battery level. When camping without city water and running off of your freshwater holding tank, be sure to turn on your water pump to pressurize the system. For manual light water heaters, first, locate the water heater access door on the outside of the camper and open it. Before turning on your water heater, be sure the tank is full of water by opening up the pressure relief valve outside and all of your hot water taps on the inside. Next, locate your gas control valve and burner assembly. To light the pilot, turn the gas control valve from the off position to the pilot position. Next, push the pilot button down and hold. While continuing to hold the pilot button, light the pilot light at the burner. You should see a blue flame at the pilot. After 10 to 15 seconds, release the pilot push button and turn the control valve to the on position for normal use. For automatic or direct spark ignition models, simply flip the switch located on or near your monitor panel to the on position. Water should be hot within 10 to 15 minutes. Next, we'll cover kitchen appliances, stove, oven, and refrigerator. Most larger refrigerators will run off of AC power or propane. To turn your refrigerator on, simply turn the selector switch to the auto position and select your temperature. The auto position will default to electricity when available and use gas when it is not. On some smaller refrigerators, such as those found on pop-ups, the controls are outside behind an access panel. Locate and remove the access panel door to gain access to all the controls. This model is a three-way fridge, 120 volt AC power and 12 volt DC power along with propane. The top control knob controls your temperature on electricity. To use this model on gas, locate the gas control and rotate it to the high position. Next, press and hold the knob down while pushing the igniter button to light the pilot. To check for flame, simply open the cover on the burner assembly. If a flame is present, after 10 to 15 seconds, you can release the control knob. The propane stove in your RV is relatively easy to use. Simply select the burner that you would like to light, turn it to the light position, and light the burner. Some models are equipped with a spark ignition button for the top burners only. In this case, simply turn the burner to light and turn the sparker. To light the pilot on the oven, turn the oven control knob to the pilot position and push and hold. Light the pilot, and after 10 to 15 seconds, release the knob and the pilot should stay lit. Then select your proper baking temperature. There are several different heat and air systems. A roof-mounted, non-ducted unit, simply switch the unit on and turn to the desired temperature. For a furnace-only thermostat, slide the furnace control to the on position and select your temperature. On higher-end models with a ducted heat and air control system, the thermostat control operates much like one at home. Simply select the system you desire, adjust the fan, and the temperature. The fan controls at the bottom of the thermostat are for the air conditioner only. Automatic will allow the unit to kick on and off at temperature, and on will run the fan continuously. RV toilets are easy to use. To rinse, simply partially depress the pedal or pull the handle. All the way down will dump. Always use a good quality chemical. RV tubs and showers operate very similar to a home unit with hot and cold water controls. To conserve water, some shower heads are equipped with an on-off switch to regulate flow without changing the temperature. To use your onboard television antenna, simply turn the handle in the clockwise position until it stops. This will raise the antenna on the roof. Once the antenna is fully extended, you can pull down on the ring and align the antenna for best signal. 
Before cranking the antenna back down, be sure to align both arrows together to allow the antenna back into its cradle properly for travel. Near your television hookup, you will find a 12 volt outlet, a coaxial connection from your antenna and the cable TV, and a black switch for the antenna power booster. When you are running off of your television antenna, be sure to have this on with the green light showing. When connected to cable, be sure to turn it off. Some models with DVD players or MP3 hookups may have additional connections. Your camper is also equipped with a 12 volt DC converter that changes your 120 volt AC power into DC power to run your lights, water pump, and other 12 volt accessories. Behind the door on your converter, you'll find your 12 volt fuses and your 120 volt AC circuit breakers. Always be sure to carry extra fuses just in case. You'll be spending a lot of time outside, so you'll definitely want to set up your awning. For power awnings, simply press the extend button located inside your camper and hold until the awning is fully extended. Manual awnings are simple as well and can be done with just one person. First, locate the travel locks located on each arm. Squeeze the black tabs together until the awning releases. Some models use a flip-up style. Next, loosen the thumb wheel on each arm, being careful not to remove it completely. Next, locate your awning rod and reach up to the top right side of the awning and flip the trigger to the roll down position. Next, using your awning rod, Loop it inside the loop and pull the awning straight out until it stops. Next, install the tension arms. These will either snap or slide into position and lock on the end of the awning. Next, tighten each thumb wheel while pulling on the tension arm to take the slack out of the awning fabric to keep it from pooling water. Finally, lift each handle and raise each arm to the desired height. That's all there is to it. You're set up and ready to camp. Happy camping.